Anoint my lips with clay. Help me to be able to deliver the word in love with revelation. Help draw us into the interest of the word of God. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The word was God. There are three that bear reckoned heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. So, Lord God, help us to receive the Word. I'm going to switch mics. Amen. Praise God. God is good. All right. I am pretty, I'm waiting to, to not come down but get into a more of a realm of delivering the Word. Because sometimes when you're in the Spirit, you just want to hold on. All right. And, you know, the Bible talks about in, in Acts that, that they were so filled with the Spirit, people thought that they were drunk. Remember? They were drinking new, new wine at 9 o'clock in the morning. You know, it's not a good sign. <laughs> but, no, they weren't drinking wine. They were filled with the Spirit. And God really wants us daily to be filled with the Spirit. Can you say amen? All right, so we're going to be teaching this. I want to kind of give it to you. We've been doing a series called Reigning in Life. In Christ, and because of the, the holidays, we kind of took a left field and we've been talking about prayer. But now we're going to talk about something that we all need to rehearse and to begin to practice. Everyone say, What's that, Pastor Kerry? Anyway, it's this we have a language of faith. You know, the church has its language, there's a way in which we should talk. Now, I'll get into that. Now, just for fun, how many here know that when you've been to the doctor, the doctor and the nurses seem to have their own doctor language? Come on, how many can identify? And they have to basically give it to us so we can understand. So you understand the idea there. How many here know I have a friend, she's a wonderful lady, loves God. But I told her, I said, can you tell me what it's like to talk slang? Okay, and just do it a little bit because she came from the hood. And she talked a little slang, and I went, whoa, it's like talking in tongues. Because she said, and they said, well, what did you say? You see, so there is in the slang realm of people that have their cultures, there is a certain language between them. Can you say amen? And we know foreign languages, there's certain languages. But people, the, the church is a nation of many nations. It's a people. It's a royal priesthood, per se. Can you say amen? And we have our own type of language. In other words, the way we should talk. We know that there should be a way that we should believe, but there's also should be a way we talk. So we're going to have fun with this and, and show you some things. Now, the whole purpose of, of teaching is for us to evaluate ourselves before God with his word. Can you say amen? We're not to build the word around our life. Almost sounds like it's okay. No, you're to build your life around the word. One guy said to me one time, he says, you know, a lot of people say, how you doing? And they'll answer, I'm just hanging in there. He says, haven't you dropped off by now? <laughs> because if we're hanging in there, who are we hanging? What strength are we hanging by? Our own. See, that's a deception. God says, let go Wrap Jesus around you and let him hold you. Let him guide you. Let him lead you. Let him teach you. He says, come on to me. All that are heavy and, and labored, and you shall find rest. Take my yoke upon you. Everyone does. What's a yoke? Well, it, it's kind of like belt your seat belt yourself in with me. We're going on a ride. And learn. He said, learn from me, not about me. See, that's the thing. The Holy Spirit's job is to bring God in such a real way of learning so that we are sitting and belted to Jesus. Can you say amen? Now, that's just a metaphor. Not only we are belted to Jesus, but who lives in us? Jesus does. Who, who dwells on us? Jesus does. And again, I'm going to repeat this for a while till people get it. Watch it from the broadcast. Remember, your armor doesn't drop off. Your armor doesn't fall off. And you don't put your armor on every day. Your armor never fell off. It never dropped off. It only dims or brightens. Hello? Because your armor is Jesus Christ. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put on the armor of light. Now, let me ask you. Just 
out of human common sense. What does light do to darkness? And not only chases it away, but it runs at 186,000 miles a second. Ka-ding! You turn the light on, right? Well, God wants that illustration for us to understand, so I'm going to give it to you. You can't see the light of God. Only God at times will allow you to see the light. We talk about it in the Old Testament. It's called the Shekinah glory, or the light that dwells. The Bible said, Jesus spoke, you are the light to the world. But he's talking about an illuminous light of his nature, his life. Now listen, I'm going to quote a scripture for you. He says, and he, in him is the life, and the life, life, L-I-F-E, is the light of men. So when we receive Jesus into our heart, we receive his life. Can you say amen? amen. But out of that, in our heart, shines forth his light. Now you can't see it, but the devil knows it real well. The devil is absolutely can't even get close to it. Now, he's given us a placebo. He's exchanged the truth for religion. What's religion? Well, I believe God in us is so effective that the enemy, if he sells us on religion, will think that God's there, but not always. And he comes and he goes as we behave ourselves, and we get this religious idea, so we get into a works program. God, I'm going to work hard and make you love me more. And all of that is an excuse Satan gives us to make us think that we're getting somewhere. It's called religion. Everyone say, I'm not religious. Now, people will call you that. Here's what I'm saying. You have a personal relationship with God. Religion could be defined as somebody going through emotion and doing something they like, even if their heart's not in it. Going through the motion, no devotion. So what I'm saying is, who crucified Jesus? Well, somebody will say, we all did. Well, yes. But who was shouting, crucify him? Huh? The religious people, I'm not even going to mention that. The religious people, because we can take what is good, you guys know this, and turn it into a religious system where we can actually drive people away. Hello? Have you ever had somebody share Jesus with you, but slapped you before you got him? You sinner, let me tell you about Jesus, you know. We kind of get these weird ideas. This is religion. This is Satan's little tool to make us feel that we're doing something well. No, no, no. We don't live for Jesus only. Can you say amen? We live through Jesus. We live by Jesus. Don't ever forget that and don't take the lead. I done preached myself happy. We're going to get our scripture up on there. So we're going to talk about the language of faith. Well, blessings, family. Today we're going to talk about how a Christian or a believer should actually talk. Now, I'm not talking about saying everything just legally. I'm talking about speaking in agreement with the word. Don't say, well, like, for example, you pray and you're asking God to save your child. Well, then don't get up from prayer and talk bad about them. That's not how a Christian really is supposed to talk in our language. And now, how many here are forgiven of our sin? Right? So why do we always point out somebody else's? Now, if I look at you, that doesn't mean I think you're guilty. Hello, I'll look at the camera more. <laughs> the idea is we need to know ourselves that well. To be able to catch ourselves when we're out of phase. Everyone say, out of phase. That, we call that normally, I, I've sinned, I made a mistake. You're out of phase. How do you get back in phase? Tell me, present yourself daily to God. He puts us in phase. You can't put yourself in phase. As much as you want to be good, you can't be good. Paul addresses that in Romans chapter 7. He says, the good that I want to do, I find myself not doing it. I'm going to tell you about Jesus, but let me whip you first. And so there are many people peddling and teaching about Jesus who haven't got the right spirit of Jesus. When we minister, we should have the fruit of the spirit. Can you say amen? So I won't meddle too long there, but let me go out in my paragraph. You ready? It says, we can actually frame our life 
by the things that we continually say. Hello? Do you remember the woman with the issue of blood? She said, if I but touch the hem of his garment, because we don't know the Greek, actually, if you look at that, she kept telling everybody for days. Everything else didn't work. If I can get to Jesus and touch his hem. So her faith was in her words. She was framing her life and the very incident. What are you doing when you come to church? What are you saying? When I get to church, God is going to do this. He's going to heal me. I'm going to open up. I want to receive every. You see, we don't set and frame ourselves. We kind of go in as a guesswork. Are you getting what I'm saying to you? This is good stuff. Now, this is stuff God gave me for all, all of us. It's important. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So, basically, that's why we present ourselves. He does the tweaking. So, being out of faith, that means you are, let me explain, you are in the spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. But when Adam and Eve sinned and passed that down into our DNA, we were born, first of all, in tune with God until we got to the age of knowing right from wrong. Then we just went out of faith. We call that went into sin. I like to call faith because then you can understand it a little bit better. Your body went one way, your soul is going this way, and you, your spirit shut off from God. That's why we have to be born again. So to get back in phase, we go to God and say, Lord, set me up, put me in phase. Just takes but 30 seconds. That's why we present ourselves to God, because he's the one that puts everything in order so that we can walk through the day in the spirit in tune with God. Everyone say amen. Walk through the day in the spirit in tune with God. Instead of being distracted so easily, we're in tune with God because God already laid out your steps. Can you say amen? And therefore, you just walk them out in faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. All right, let me just give you a couple more points, and then we'll go on to our, 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 um, our scripture. Boy, man, the Spirit's really on me. It's wonderful. Okay, we are to walk with Christ. Now, listen, not religion. We are to walk with Christ. He'll help us to see and understand the Jesus way of life, to line up our speaking and our doing with the Word of God. In love. Can you say amen? What kind of love? God's love. You can't love everybody with your love. For some of us, we really don't love ourselves. That's talking about your flesh. But we love others with God's love, and we know no man after the flesh. And it goes on a little further. The only way we can tame and control our tongue is how? Give it to God. How many here have not been able at times to stop from saying what you shouldn't have said? Now, don't raise your hand. You know exactly what I'm saying. Some people are a little bit less under control with that. As soon as they get irritated, they'll just let something have it. The Bible says that if you're going to be a powerful Christian, you can't be, no, you can't be in the habit of that. Now, everything I'm going to talk about, the language of faith, is being in the habit of it. We're not talking about a slip, you know, you accidentally cussed out, you know, and you slip this. Now, we're not talking about that. This is the habit of doing these. These are the little foxes that destroys from within. You want to have a marvelous, powerful spiritual walk? Isn't that what we're hungry for? Well, then we've got to get rid of the little things that short out our walk. We have to. So we go to God and let him start trimming us, start working on us. Says, God, I don't know what it is with my mouth lately, but I give my tongue and my mouth to you so that I speak up. I speak positive things. You see, you don't have to cuss. You don't have to curse someone. You can always talk down. I'll never do this. I tried that one time, and it doesn't work. That's cursing yourself. Your tongue and language is not in line with God's word. Are you seeing what I'm saying? How many times have you called yourself stupid? Oh, I only did it once. You know, look, I wish we could, but we, we can't. God listens. You know, hook a tape recorder to us for a day or two. And just listen what comes out. We need to really just to take a good, healthy analyzation so we know. Remember that our life right now, where we are, is because of our tongue. 
Sure, you gave your tongue to God because you believed in your heart and confessed with your... Uh-huh. Now, here's the thing. It was made unto what? You believed in your heart. You confessed with your mouth. It was made unto salvation. You guys, know your scriptures. Salvation means healing, wholeness, soundness, being delivered from darkness, walking in the light. So what are you saying? It's, see, we believe in our heart and say with our mouth. We believe in our heart and say with our mouth. And every day we go about. We say with our mouth, it paints pictures, and we believe because hope is what faith works to. So you begin with your mouth either to speak good and positive. I'm not talking about some stupid positive stuff, which really is not stupid. I'm talking about be careful when you go to comment and criticize others. Be careful when you go, go to run down yourself. You might wear yourself out. Be careful when you get mad and you, you let the flesh take over because that's not the language of faith. Now, it's not the slip. It's not the accident. It's not the, you know, missing God on that. It's the habit of doing that that defiles and corrupts you from within. Someone say, not me. Amen. You want to make sure as a Christian not to hold resentment or bitterness in your heart and despise others. Very poisonous. These, this, this ruins you from within. All right, I won't stop there. And so let's read our paragraph. Boy, I better take, my mouth is dry, so I better take a sip. It says, for Christ is the end of the law. Do you hear what that said? Law, Ten Commandments, the law, the ordinances that were placed on the Jewish people to point them that they can't save themselves. You can't keep all of these things. You need to turn yourself over to Jesus Christ. So when Jesus Christ came, he neutralized and fulfilled the law. So why are we going back and putting ourselves under bondage? So for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. But the righteousness of faith, of what? Faith, faith speaks. Uh -huh. Wait a minute, there's a language there. You know, we've already been made right. God, the right one, is in our hearts. So we need to speak right. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Now, here's the negative. Don't say in your heart, who going to go down and get Jesus up? He's asleep. That is to bring Christ uh, down from above. Or who's going to descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does the word say? What does faith say? What's our language supposed to be saying? The word is near you, in your mouth, in your heart. That is the word of faith, faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord or the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, how many here believe that? Then you're saved. You will be saved, healed, whole, made complete. You're under construction. Keep saying the right things. For with the heart, one believes unto being right with God. And with the mouth, you confess, continually confess, say the language of faith, not stupid stuff, but make sure you're not saying negative stuff all the time. Don't be in the habit of it. And your confession is made unto what? You see, it's a process. So say this with me. I got born again. Therefore, I am saved. My mind is being renewed. Therefore, I am being saved. And my body one day will change. Therefore, I totally will be saved. So you're under construction. You're saved in your heart by faith. The change is happening here. You're like a seed, but the old shell has to crack away. Look at, pinch your body, say, old shell, crack away. You have to bring it to God so he can nail it. Say amen. That's an old Baptist phrase. I got a hiccups and I have to sip, sip this. Don't you just love me? I'm your pastor. Anyway, so did you get this? We're going to cover these four areas. Number one, we're going to talk about the language of faith. We're going to show you what to avoid, some ideas, and then you can take it from there with the Holy Spirit. Say amen. 
two, the two fountains, the sweet fountain and the bitter. Three, we're going to talk about God's power is released through your tongue. Well, I thought God could regulate his power when everyone... Yes, he can. But he pours out his power through you too. So your tongue, if it's always speaking negative, you're never going to have any power coming out of there because you'll shut it off. Unknowingly, maybe, but you'll still shut it off. And then fourthly, loose lips will sink ships. Yours, mine. You are a product of your continual talking. Now, I'm not saying you talk too much. I'm just saying how you talk, listen, the, the tone in which you talk. And some people talk like this, and then like that, and the devil goes, wow, they're real positive. I mean, he listens in, doesn't he? You've got a whole computer system listens in. We have one. NSA has one. I love them. But they can pick up on words like bomb and all this and everything, and they zero in on who slipped there. So if the human can do it with a system, and the devil has God's system he stole, then he's running these systems on us. So we need to talk like God. Say amen. Now, I'm going to tell you why. We need to talk more positive and up. Can you say amen? We're supposed to be heavenly minded. Say amen. Not earthly minded. See, when you talk, isn't this amazing? When you talk, your brain paints pictures. Hello? Hello? When, when you talk or sometimes other people talk and you're on the same page, it paints pictures. It's called conversation. How God gave us his word. The word came and it paints pictures for us, so we have his ideas, his pictures, which give us hope. Now we have something our faith can work towards. For faith is, sub, is the substance of things hoped for. So our words are actually like a steering wheel. They'll actually steer our life on a daily, throughout the day basis. Everyone say, thank you for that information. Because that's how you're designed. God designed you that way. Now, the devil knows it. That's why he's constantly bombarding some people with negative thoughts all the time, hoping that you're going to open mouth and insert foot. No, everyone laugh. Folks, Proverbs 6, 2 says, you are hung by your tongue. You are snared by the words of our mouth. Hello, we are taken captive. No, 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 we're set free. So we really have to learn the language of faith. Say amen. All right, point one, the language of faith. Go with me to Matthew chapter 12. Now, before we get into that, and as you're going through there, the Bible calls us the trees of righteousness. In Isaiah 61, verse 3, the planting of God. God planted us like trees. Now, we're not trees, but we're like trees. Jesus called us and says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Well, it's like a tree. When God appeared to Moses on, uh, on the mount, he appeared at a burning bush tree. Why? Because that's kind of like our nature. Over in Ephesians chapter 3, you want to want to get this, we grow in four dimensions, four areas. We go height, spiritually, we go breadth or, or width, okay, that's our character, we grow um, length, I have to remember them all, you know, length is our endurance to stick with it, and we grow in depth, everyone say, see the four areas, depth is our roots and our stability, Height is our spirituality, and, and there's our character, our, our, our breadth, who we really are and who we really aren't. Are we fooling ourselves? Are we just real before God? And then our endurance. God doesn't want us sprinting and promising all the time and not enduring. Can you say amen? He who endures to the end shall be saved. 
All right, you guys are blessed. So you ready? So we're trees of righteousness, so you'll get this. It says in verse 33, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad or its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its... So if you're religious, you're going to think you're doing right, but it's going to be bad. Because religion comes from the flesh. True faith comes from the spirit of you. Your spirit in here where God lives. No trouble with white shirts. If anything drops off your beard, you can see it. I can't wait to go out for lunch. No, just kidding. Bringing you back, though. You think about it? You know a tree by what? So listen, Christian. The devil wants us to complain about people that don't have any fruit. Wants us to be the rescuer. We're going to go over there and help their life out. Hey, if they never ask you to help out, stay out of it. Let God step in. But do not also attack other Christians. Listen, there's some people out there you might not like, the way they present themselves, all the tragedies and the things. Well, we have no business listening to gossip and no business attacking what belongs to God. Say amen. amen. This is things that are not the language of faith will destroy our faith. How does God like unbelief, folks? He hates it. Because unbelief is part of Satan's character. Unbelief. Say, I have some unbelief. Well, well if you say that, it's right here in your flesh. Who lives in your spirit, man? Come on, let's, let's get it. Spirit. God lives in here. So can God sin? So if we live from the God part of us out, we're going to not make so many mistakes. This is walking in the spirit, you see. But we don't slow down enough, get the rhythm of God, let the flow. God's never late. He's always on time. But if you're rushing around, you're liable to get into the wrong area and make a wrong mistake. God wants us a little better than that. Can you say amen? So he wants our language to come up. Folks, study what happened to Lot. He was sitting outside the gate because he couldn't sit in the stench of the city. And he was there and he was, says he was vexed by watching and listening to all the sins of everybody. Keep your eyes up. We're living in weird times. Strange times. People are not themselves. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. I'm not talking about you. But if we got our eyes on that all the time, it's going to affect us. And that's where the devils have the church. Picking on one another, criticizing this. This is not the language of faith. Hello. Language is faith. Would you like to know about my Lord? Language, how you doing, brother? How you doing, sister? Oh, not so much. Let's pray together. Language, it brings people up. It doesn't put people down nor bring people down. Say Amen. Come on, you laugh with me. So let's go on and read this. And it says, look, brood of vipers. Now he's talking to the religious group. Okay, brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? The reason why Jesus addresses the evil is they were religious and not born again. He even talked to his disciples. You, being evil, can give good gifts. He isn't calling them evil. It's a bit, not quite a good translation. It says, you that have not God can even do good things. He says, but if you do it often enough, you can become religious and think you are doing things for God. That's a deception. God is not after Cain's works. Do you remember Cain and Abel? Plays all the way through the Bible. Cain is always trying to bring himself and in his works and what he does. What do you think? God and Abel just does what he, God wants and enjoys his life. Now, who killed who? Here's a little thing to always remember. Satan is the author of religion. Religion will yell, crucify him every time. So you're not religious. You love Jesus. Right, Michael? You love him so much. Amen. Are you beginning to see this? So a good man, out of the good deposit or treasure of his heart, brings forth what? All right. 
And he called them brood of vipers. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I used to counsel a lot. I don't do that anymore. I let God's word and their prayers counsel them and God himself. Because I used to tell somebody, okay, this is what we need to do. Can you do that? Oh, yeah, I do that. So I'll see you next week. We'll check up and see if you really did that. They come back, and they didn't do that. Uh, you know, so what do you mean you didn't do that? You didn't take the medicine? You just stared at the bottle? And that's where people are at church. They're staring at the bottle and the entertainment, the excitement, which is wonderful. But they're not getting any word or understanding much. That's not good because we build our life on the word. Can you say amen? And the word was with God and the word was God. The word was God. The word still is God. You build your life on Jesus. So then he goes on further, verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word men shall speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. Two judgments we'll talk about it later. For by your words you will be what? Justified or made right. And by your words you will be what? So here's where a lot of Christians are. They're talking both. They'll talk God, get into church, everything's cool. Something will happen during the week, and then they'll lose their perspective with God. Never, listen carefully, never run your life from your perspective. What do you mean? How you think it is? Because that's dangerous. Run your life how, from God's perspective, perspective and what he tells you and how he... Why? Because how we think, perceive things, is not a real clear judge of how we view things. Can you say amen? Have you ever thought somebody was that way and they were not that way at all? How about all these people out there thinks God's harsh? God's out there and he's doing this and he's doing that. Do they know they're God? They might even say Jesus is my Lord, but they certainly never got close enough to learn. God wants us to rest and learn in him. Say amen. amen. All right. By your words, you're made right. By your words, you're condemned. So let's go ahead and get rid of the things we should be saying. Romans chapter 10, please. Verse 8 through 10. But the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. As now that we're right with God, we need to speak a special way. Why? It keeps us out of trouble. But what does it say? The word is near you. The word in your mouth and in your heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. Now, I can go on. I read this before in our intro. So God wants us to talk in at least agreement with the word. He doesn't want you talking against the word or against the nature of God in your heart anymore because then we become contrary. How many know that's double-mindedness? What happens to a double-minded male or female? We can't even receive from God because we're vacillating so much. Our eyes on people, our eyes on ourselves, our eyes this. We believe God, but, we, but help our... And we, we, hello, I, would you say that's out of phase? Exactly. Satan's a master at putting you out of phase. When you do, just stop. Say, Lord, I've gotten out of phase. Wow, most refreshing thing is when he goes, and back in phase you are. It's not going to take an hour. But if you stay out of phase long enough, something's liable to get out of joint. Man, your bones can ache. It's not God doing that. It's just everything's not in phase. And not in phase, we could step where we shouldn't or ahead before our time to do it. You can have the right idea, but timing's way off. Everyone say, oh, me. That's it. But, you know, we need to know that. Okay. Again, so let's go to James chapter 3. First three verses on the same point, the language of faith. In verse 1, my brethren... Let, let not many of you choose to become teachers or you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. Do you know why? 
because of the words we talk about. What am I up here doing all the time? Did you know when I was a kid, I still had to give to Gab? God just switched it around. But your words have, if you're going to talk a lot, your words have to be correct, have to be in line with the word. Can you say amen? I, I, first thing I want to say to Scott, I use you a lot, Scott. How you doing, Scott? And he goes, oh, okay, awesome. Well, you need to improve. You see, you see, I'm being thorny and thistly and judgmental. I'm not to talk like that. I'm to lift him up. I'm to speak up. You know, when I preach and teach, I hope to, and hope you get a vision of this. How many ever been in a shower? With Daryl, he probably has to have a big one, you know, tall one, you know. Okay, but nevertheless, we love that shower coming down. The word of God should be showered on you. I should speak up and over you and let the word trickle down like water and snow, like it says in Isaiah 55, trickling down and in, in upon the earth brings forth the bud. So when I preach, you don't preach at people. You don't talk about them. Hello? You preach the word, and you pray the Holy Spirit. Open the eyes of their understanding. Our job is not to curse, but to bless. That's why Jesus, he, now we, we don't have enough information except by the Spirit. When Jesus says, bless those that curse you, we think, I'm not going to do that. That's not what he's saying. First of all, you got to know the, the Greek and Hebrew for bless, which means stay up in your conversation about those that hate you. In other words, don't get where they're at. Don't get yourself down in their grease. Stay above. You understand now? And instead of cursing them, an eye for an eye, you're going to bless them and that blessing is going to convict them and drive them to God. Better than that, than say, you know, you better get your together. Now you stepped in front of God and you gave a, an idea. What if that person does have it together, but that was your judgment? So we need a conversation of faith and encouragement. You know, and there's several people I've met that are like that. Before I even met them, you know, Linda's one of those, several other that are just up. Christie's another. They're just up in what they do. We want to love and encourage that. Can you say amen? I mean, we even hire cheerleaders at our football games. You get people up. Why? Because they haven't figured it out yet. Get up, my friends. Talk up. You have a language of faith. That language will steer your life and cause you either to be blessed or not so blessed. We'll go on. So my brethren, let not many of you try to be a teacher, for we all stumble with many things. If anyone does not stumble or offend in word, he's a mature man able to bridle or control his whole body, rendering in the Greek his whole life his whole life. So remember, God's living in us. He takes control of our tongue. When you really want to just say your mind, the Holy Spirit won't let you to do it. Sometimes I've just sat and listened. I could have said a thing or two. I just sat and listened, and the Holy Spirit just dropped right in. A quiet answer turns away what? Yeah. All right. So let's go on to the next point. Yay. The two fountains, sweet and bitter, okay? The Bible says, I think it's either Colossians or Ephesians, make sure we don't have a root of bitterness in us. That means you've been offended, but you've never gone to God and given it to God. So every time you talk about it, you bring it up again. And then all of a sudden, you start poisoning others. Thank God that's not us. Say amen. So while you're going to James, excuse me, the two fountains, chapter 3, so we're going to start at verse 8. You can read ahead. I'm going to give you a couple points. If Jesus said, watch our words, then we should what? Watch our words. How we speak, why we speak, the tone, the tone. Satan listens for tones. Ah, you know, somebody who speaks monotone puts you to sleep. 
I know hypnotize. I can hypnotize. I've only done it a couple of times, but it takes a melodic tone and rhythm to cause that to happen. You have to get their attention. And you know, that's just what the serpent did. He put Eve under a hypnotic trance and also Adam with, with her. So he was able to get them to eat. Listen, God wants you clear-minded, in tune, up in the spirit. Say amen, whether you feel like it or not. Praise the Lord, especially when you're sick. Loudly, if you can. Between uh, whatever. <laughs> Blah, you know? Start using what you know to do. It's just your body. Your body wants to take you, wants to lie down, wants to give up. It wants to play, oh, poor me. Oh, why did I suffer this? Me, me. And we don't mean anything negative by it. It's a trick. Our flesh is not our friend. Could you imagine? Peggy and I are going to sing a song for you. Here we go. I'm my own best friend. No, we're not. We want God to be our best friend. All right, so you ready in James, now, verse 8. But no man can tame the tongue. We already know that. We can tame just about everything else. The tongue is to be in God's hands. Can you say amen? It's an unruly evil. In other words, it's connected to the flesh, full of deadly poison. Whoops. Sorry, Lord. With it, we bless our God and the Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. Oh, and Satan knows this. Somebody cuts you off. Listen to the wisdom in this. I'm, I'm an old driver. Somebody cuts you off. They don't even know what they did. Almost gets you in a wreck, and you're honking your horn, and you're just irritated. Now they're controlling your emotions and don't even know you exist. How dumb is that? That's how the devil works. He'll, he'll get throw something your way, hoping that you're going to respond emotionally. Hoping that you're going to get out of phase about it so that he can lay another little trap. Don't play the game. Hello? If the devil wants you to step here, and he's going, step here, and he's trying to work everybody, or the whole situation for you to step there, don't step there. Need to run our habits before God. How often do we do negative things? And why do we do them? And don't condemn yourself. Remember, God's washing it out of us. He's getting Egypt out of us. So we have to have that exposure to God so he can put us in phase, but wash the Egypt out of us. The bad thinking and all. Hello? And if we don't admit we have some of that, then we can't be cleaned up. Because if you don't know you have it, you can't be knowing to get rid of it. And if everybody else can see it, guess what's going to happen? They're all going to tell you about it. And if you're married, that's what the woman is for. <laughs> she helped meet your stupidity. Anyway, come on, just laugh. I'm glad you laughed with me. And if you get a chance... Look at that clip that we had and we gave all to you guys. Go over it again. Just understanding the difference between a man and a woman, how they think and react, because it'll help you understand. We, we talked about it in our Bible study. Oh, don't miss those. About the, the giftings of the motivational spirits, why people do what they did, you know, in their motives. So it, we'll go over it again sometime. But we need to understand that God has made each unique and individual. So if Peggy's not in church or she's not with us, we're, we're talking about if you miss, then part of that Peggy gift and lighting is, is gone, even though it might be good circumstances. And if people just do their thing, we're, we're also called lively stones, aren't we? How can, if we're lively stones, how come we're so off the wall? <laughs> All right. All right, point two. Two fountains, you ready? So here we go. We're going to talk about it. Out of the same mouth, my mouth, yes, pastor, proceed blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Now, this is James, Jesus' brother, 
Does a spring send forth fresh water and a bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a, a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt and fresh. Now you go, wow, that's heavy. Remember he's speaking in Jewish hidden language. He's saying you got two connections to a well. One well is not so well. That's your flesh, bitter water, salty water. And the other is in your spirit. So your mouth's connected to both. So to whom you yield your tongue to is what's going to come out, bitter or sweet? Bitter or sweet? And man, it's like pork at the tongue. The Indians tell us, man, speak with pork tongue. Bitter, sweet. So what happens is the enemy knows this. So he tries to always get in and have us comment on the obvious. Hey, gee, looks like you haven't got it together. Bitter. Or, hey, let's pray together. Man, I've had struggles. Let's, let's get together. Brother, let's, let's go out for coffee. Sweet. Hello. And then we know the law of sowing reaping. So everyone say, I know the law of sowing and reaping. Sweet begot sweet. Bitter begot bitter. So don't let the, love, the devil bring the level of your talking and language down onto the earth. Earthy. That wisdom is not from above. If earthly, sensual, and devilish. Hello. And that's what he wants us to talk out of that bitter fountain. So what do we do, Pastor Kerry? When we go to God, part of our presentation, I say to God, Lord, help me to shut off the bitter fountain. Shut the flesh down so the bitter fountain doesn't leak out through the day. Because your bitter fountain, talking negative in the flesh, will rip down your hedge, will dim your, your armor, and cause you to have more struggles. We know that prayer is an answer. Jesus says, pray not that you enter temptation. Pray that you don't enter temptation. So what keeps us out of temptation? Prayer. Meet with God, get that taken care of, put God first, and get soaked. And he'll shut down the bitter fountain. Therefore, if somebody pulls in front of you, you go, I bless them, Lord. Help them in their driving. You see? You didn't come down. You stayed up. Why? When you're up and heavenly in that realm of the spirit, you're open to receive anything good and lovely from God. You don't see the bad in things so much. They're there. Don't ignore them. But certainly don't eat of them. You see, when you look at it hard enough and you talk about it long enough, you are eating filth. Let's move on. Poisoning ourselves. All right. Does a spring bring forth? Yeah, we just got that. Now, can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? We know that Becky's going to bear Becky godly fruit. That Christy's going to bear godly Christy fruit. Okay, Peggy's going to bear, you know, godly Peggy fruit. BJ the same, and all of you the same, all of you, so many did not to mention. The idea is we are to bear fruit. It only comes out of our spirit, not our flesh. Now, folks, how many here know anything about electricity? How many of you don't, you don't cross the negative with the positive? Why? You'll blow a fuse. That's what the devil's done with your tongue. You're speaking good one time, speaking negative. Watch what you talk, and maybe you talk too much. Keep it a little bit, bridle it a little bit, control a little bit with the help of God. Watch your life lift up more. Someone say amen. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you the secrets of the kingdom. They're there. They've always been there. But they're hidden with religion. You just better talk right. Well, how am I going to do that? You better work on it. That's psychology. That's condemnation. And it certainly is not the gospel. It's the truth, though. There's a toast to you. I love you. 
Say amen. amen. Let's go to the third point. God's power is released through the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18, you know these verses, 20 and 21. Now as you go there, church, no man can control the tongue. We turn it over daily to God. We have two fountains. Shut down the flesh fountain. Speak out of your spirit encouragement. Things are up. Speak up and watch your tones. Thirdly, to dwell on or think about self is an actual poison. Some people, I mean, things are going tough. But the worst thing you can do is talk about it. Speak up. God's going to do it. He's going to see us through. He's never let us down. Talk up. Why? Because it keeps you open for what God has. Talking down shuts you off from even seeing what's clear. Got it? Good point. Don't talk down all the time. It will shut you down. So if you can't say something good, try to... Amen? I had that experience happen to me one time. I haven't got time to tell you. Where actually I could feel God go, and shut my mouth. Because it would have hurt this brother, and I didn't know it. I was too young to understand that. All right, are you still with me? So God's powers are released through the tongue. Go with Proverbs 18. Look at verse 20. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth, right? I mean, no, you can eat what you will and all. But you eat to be usually satisfied. Now remember something. Know enough about your body. If your body's bigger than it should be, don't try to satisfy it. It's dangerous. You need to crucify it. A man's stomach will be satisfied by the fruit of your mouth, whatever you put in your mouth. And this is from the produce, our produce our, of his lips. The more you talk, how you talk, he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the what? And those who dwell or love it will eat its fruit. Now, he's saying the same thing, but it, it kind of sounds like it's different. No, it's not different. It's saying you eat the way you want to eat because your flesh drives you for satisfying. The flesh is never satisfied. Don't eat like that. Sit down and ask God how he wants you to eat. Oh, make a mass meal for everybody else and have them come up and present it to themselves. But God never forces anything that's going to harm you. Food should be good. That's the up part. Don't let your food become the devil's tool to snuff your life. Have you got that wisdom? And don't excuse it. Don't excuse it. You will have to answer before Jesus about the things you should have done but never did. So let's get before the Lord and get all that dealt with now. Say amen. All right, so don't let me make you feel bad. So death and life are in your tongue. What would you do? You confessed Jesus, didn't you? You brought life, and you did it with your tongue. You believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. This is why I tell people, don't pray with your head. Don't sit there and dwell. You can make some marvelous prayers in your head, and God hears them. But the covenant's not Enforce because you're not speaking. We're to speak. Hello? Confess with your mouth. Confession of faith. Confess our sin. What? It's talking. So if our talking can be dangerous, we need to confess who first? God. Father, I get up this morning and I acknowledge you. Boy, look at me. Here I am. Oh, I love you. Appreciate you, Lord. I present myself to you, and I'm out of phase. I don't know how you did. Must have fell out of bed. But I'm out of phase even before I get going. Phase me in, Lord, as I worship you, and I thank you. And then, boop, boom, me, 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 he phases you in. Then you go from there, talking to God, going to your toothbrush in the restroom, Hello, get in the shower. You're going through your routine, talking with God. Oh, Lord, it's going to be great today. Now, clear the traffic for my, my travel. Lord, let me have favor with my bosses. And Lord, let something special happen in your glory. You start your day off. You know, none of that has taken me very long, has it? Start your day every day that way. If you don't, well, you're just going to kind of lumber along. 
And God doesn't want us lumbering along. How, were you always the person behind in the line? Hurry up! Hurry up, you're going to be late. Don't be that person. That's not you anymore. That's your flesh. Why is it that everything you should have done the night before, you remember to do just before you're ready to go to church? Now, why do we continue to let that happen? Satan is just playing you. You're a puppet still. He plays you. You're doing something good and you injure yourself. He's playing you. Did you pray about before you did that? See, I want to keep you under a protection so that life itself doesn't kill you. Come on, say, oh, me, oh, amen. So sometimes we can just get going because we know what to do, but should we be doing it? I'll toast to you. I've learned that lesson so many times. So not a put down, just to wake up. Amen. So, number one, church, we received Jesus in our heart by our tongue, didn't we? we? We got our life changed. It will continue to change. I've said this as a revelation to, to a lot of people. Once we give our life to God, please don't take it back. How so, Pastor? You see, when I gave my life to the Lord, I mean, I was totally blessed for a period of months. It's just like I was in heaven. And then, piece by piece, I started pulling back into my understanding things and my control. And I started taking myself out of God's hands and pulling back the control of my life. This is a deception that the enemy works in us. Because we have a habit, if we don't stay fresh before God, to pull our past into our present, and to go practice like we used to practice. Now, I'm not talking about sin here. It's the things that we used to do. Now we come to a problem. Instead of asking God, what's the salvation? What's, what's the answer? We begin to try to solve it ourselves. But what do we have to work with? What past experiences we thought we knew and we handled? Lean not to your own understanding, Jesus said. All your ways be in conversation with me so I can direct your path. Say amen. Finally, loose lips will sink ships. Our ship. You can't have two fountains going all day long. Can you say amen? Because it'll create double-mindedness and unsurety. The man said when he couldn't get his son delivered, Jesus, I brought them to your disciples, but they're too busy arguing with stuff. They had no power. So, and Jesus, oh, faithless, bring him to me. So he brought the son to him, and the father says, I believe, Lord, but help my unbelief. So that's honesty. Where does all our unbelief come from? Our flesh, carnal mind. Flesh and carnal mind. What do we do with our flesh? Crucify it on a daily and renew our mind. Amen. But in our spirit, if we're living from our spirit, who lives in our spirit? Does he have any unbelief? You're a new creation. Let God take the lead in your life from your spirit, and you won't be doubting. Say amen. He'll phase out the old man, and he'll amplify the new creation. Say amen. All right, let's finish with you. Please don't fall asleep because you're not used to sermons like this. Get yourself ready on a Saturday night and don't let Saturday nights be messed with. God gave it as a day of rest to prepare for Sunday morning. Just a joke, but let's go on. He did. All right. Are you with me? Ecclesiastes chapter 5. I want to take the time to read this to you. Verse 1 through 3, then 6 through 7. L listen to what this said. This is Solomon. Wisdom of God. Walk prudently, uprightly, and don't put our foot in our mouth when you go into the house of God. Can I have an amen? And draw near to listen or hear rather than to give the sacrifice of fools. What's he talking about? Hello? For they do not know that they do evil. You see, Jesus said, so let your yea be yea, and you know, be no, because anything... All wasted words can be evil, can give room to the evil one. Hello? So you got it. 
Do not be rash or hasty with your mouth. Let not your heart utter anything hastily before God. Oh, God, I promise you I'm going to do this. Please don't do that. For God is in heaven and you are on the earth. Therefore, let your words be few. What are our words to be? Few and positive. Amen. That's for our good. And probably for the good of others, too. Hello? Then it goes on. For a dream comes through much activity, and a fool's voice is known by his many words. Woo! I don't know. When I was a kid, I picked beans. We used to go out in the bean fields and pick beans, flats of beans. Oh, and it was fun. You get to meet new people, but it didn't pay much. You know, when I come home, guess what I dreamt about? Beans. See, busyness can give you dreams. Some people will ha have these things that they think is God speaking to them, their visions and dreams, but it's just because of their busyness. God wants you to be busy about him. Listen. So he can give you visions and dreams. If you're busy with just about everything else, you're going to start dreaming about it. Hello? We want God's will in our life. Say amen. Then he goes, verse 6, excuse me, 6. And it says, do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. In other words, your mouth can release some things. We're talking about your mouth releases. Nor say before the messenger of God, the angel of God, that it was an error. What he's talking about was, as there were people promising God. That's why Jesus said, swear not by the altar, swear not by yourself, swear not using anybody else. I swear on my mother's grave kind of thing. No, because you don't trust yourself. He says, don't vow or don't swear by anything. Don't promise God anything. Just say, Lord, help me. And then you got it in the right perspective. Don't promise God you're going to give twice as much next week because you forgot to give this. Don't do things. That's the enemy. It's just playing a game. No, God's not into con condemning you. He'll say, honey, give when you can. Now, we should be faithful because we love him. But listen, God does not obligate his children under some task-masking God Say amen. Now watch. Do not let your mouth cause your flesh to sin. Don't say before the angels why they protect us. Why should God be angry then and excuse and destroy the work of your hands? Thank God we're in the New Testament. For in a multitude of dreams and many words, there is also vanity, selfishness, but fear God instead. Say Amen. You see, if you're trying to be somebody, you've forgotten one thing. When you got saved, God made you somebody. You're home. So don't try to be somebody. Let God make you who he wants you to be. In other words, step back, relax, obey, and then enjoy your walk with God. There's no taskmastering. You've got to do this. And you, if, you got, if you're doing that, that's really not God doing. God does not drive people to do things. He leads. He's a shepherd. When you try to drive sheep, they just scatter. That's the devil. When the devil's at work, he scatters your family. He scatters between all that out when the enemy's too close. You can recognize him because you can tell the tree by its fruit. You can smell him a mile away if you walk with God. Say Amen. Go with me to Ephesians 4, 29 and 30, and then we'll just finish up with you. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Where would corrupt communication come from, the flesh or the spirit? Flesh. So in other words, if you're shut down your flesh daily, you're not going to have that much slippage. Hello? Hello? There are people who go to God, but only surfacely talk to God. Their heart is guarded maybe by some kind of hurt. Let God in there. Cry. Break down. Let God get a hold of that. And then he'll rebuild you up. 
God loves a contrite spirit. That means somebody that doesn't resist him. That you're contrite to be taught and loved like a child who really needs their father and mother. Say amen. amen. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but what is good for the hearers that it may minister grace to them. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God for by whom you were sealed by the day of your redemption. Listen, the Holy Spirit's all around you. He's here to minister to you, to see that you become a success, that you're walking the path. But if you're constantly saying negative things, you're going to grieve him and shut him down. He's a dove. Hello? You don't throw old deer manure on doves. Look up and laugh. That's what our flesh does. It's insulting to God. Oh, God, you know I'm faithful to you, and I come because I have been such a good man. Remember the two that prayed? There was two people who went down to pray. One was a Pharisee, one was a sinner. And the Pharisee said, Oh, God, I thank you that I'm not like this man, that I tithe, I do all that you've asked me to do. And, Lord, it says he prayed to himself about himself, before God, you know, and he, and he just went on. And then the, little, the guy, he just, he just got on his knees and says, oh, God, I just want you. I'm sorry. Have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. And, you know, he just wants God. Which one do you think is blessed? So every day you should have the same thing. Make sure you're not sitting around in control of everything. Amen. You're not driving your life. Notice I said driving. No, you're on the back seat. I was barreling out full speed ahead. I was running every stop sign that I could see, thinking I would give the Lord a shortcut. I found out he doesn't need no help from me. But now I'm riding in the back seat, and I find it is a wonderful place to be. Now I've been riding in the back seat, and I'm leaving all the driving to the chief. That's our life. We're into his vehicle, his kingdom, his life. And we're to stay within that so that we're protected and shielded from this manure he planted. Now remember, the earth is very pretty. But this planet system sucks. Don't play with it. It's designed to rip you off. It's Satan's system. Thief kills, steals, and destroys. Life will kill, steal, and destroy, depending if you put your trust in it. Don't. God says, I'll be with you in life. You live through me and by me for life. Can you say amen? And then what comes out of us is life. And the life is the light that Satan can't stand. Shine, baby, shine. You go to the supermarket, bring the light, blast the devil out of there, and you get the deals. Slow down. Enjoy. Oh, Lord, who do you want me to talk to today? Every day I say that. Be surprised how many times in low I prayed somebody through the prayer of salvation. One man was a Pentecostal, Pentecostal who got away from the Lord. Pentecostal pretty harsh. I'm a Pentecostal, though. We can be pretty legalistic. He lost his faith in God and bad experiences because his eyes were on men. Take your eyes off of mankind. They're going to insult you. And so guess what? I says, well, he says, I, I got a broken back, and I was this injury. And I says, how you doing now? And he says, I'm kind of hurting. I said, will you let me pray for you? And he said, well, yeah, I'm Pentecostal, you know. You get the humor of this. So I said, you believe I'll pray, okay? Yeah. Two agreeing on earth, touching him. I prayed, and God healed him instantly. And I said, stand up and move your neck. He stood up and moved his neck. But as soon as he kicked in his thinking, he thought, I'm not supposed to be doing this. I'm not. This is not supposed to happen at Lowe's. And his mind kicked in and started sucking all that victory. And he shrunk right back. And you could hear his bones crack back up. How many times have people lost their healing because they went around trying to see if they're any better? 
And he was completely healed. I say, well, I need to tell you this. You stood up straight. You know you did. You seemed to have heard all the bones cracking, and you know that. And now look at you. You accepted back what the devil wants you to have. Now you deal with it. Go to God about it. Good day, happy, and shopping at Lowe's. Can you say amen? That's who you are. I'm not any more special than you. I have, might have more ammunition, but start gathering. It's called the Word of God. And finishing with you, thank God. If we are going to walk with God, we've got to watch how we speak. No if and but about it. You can't say you're a Christian and talk like the devil because it will affect your walk. Two, those who desire to move with power must refrain their lips from speaking guile and against others. Stop attacking other brothers and sisters. Stop talking down about this and criticizing this. It's the act of doing that will poison you. Yes, maybe this steak was awful, it was like leather, but do you have to tell the whole restaurant? Hey, it's quiet in here. That's what I'm talking about. The waitress might have been rude. Give her an extra tip. Do you have to tell, how, discuss at the table, boy, she was rude. I went out with uh, some wonderful Christians until I started hearing them talk. Everything that came out was a criticism, was negative, and it was, I can never do this, and I don't know. I'll, I tried that, and it failed. You hear the language in that? It isn't so much what they're saying. It's the continuation of the tone and what they're talking about all the time. It's poison. It's the serpent. It's his voice, and it's supposed to be the voice of a stranger we will not listen to. Say amen. And as a good shepherd, I believe I am, my job is to point you to God, get you to meet with him, get you to get so used to him that if a counterfeit or something against him came around, you'd recognize it a mile away. And finishing. All right, I want to give you a couple of scriptures. Proverbs 29, 20, and Proverbs 17, 28. Listen, 29, 20. Do you see a man speaks too much with his words? There's more hope for him than a fool. Woo! Now, folks, let me explain. A fool back then meant somebody who doesn't want to learn. I'm going to say it again. A fool, in the time that this is written, is someone who refuses or doesn't want to learn. And if it's about God, then they are a fool. They're being foolish. You see? Now, we have other names for things. But fool is in there. Now, the Bible says don't call your brother a fool. Because that's somebody who's stubborn, doesn't want to learn, probably going to go to hell. So just don't do that. It's negative talk. Can you say amen? Now, God, a long time ago, told me, he said, son, if you're going to move in power and you're going to preach well, make sure that you reframe your mouth from judging and name-calling. That's stupid. Why do they do that? Hello? Come on. I says, and of course, you ask him Why? He says, because power comes out of there, and if you shut the power down by making comments that are obvious and negative, then there's only going to be a little leak coming out of you. I want a river coming out of you. So you're shutting me down by the negative talk and being criticizing and thinking you know better. No, no, no. The more you know, the humbler you are to make others feel knowing. My job is to make you to know, to feel knowing feel special before God so he can reveal things to you. And the next scripture is Proverbs 17, 28. Even a fool is counted wise when he holds his peace. <laughs> Amen. When he shuts his lips, he is considered perspective. Hello. I done that many times. I went to the first church that God sent me. Our right, pastor Todd is really good for two years. And they said, I'm going to release you. I'm going home. Are you leaving us? No, he's just going back where he came from. And so we went around church looking for somewhere we could be a part and, and, and be a part of. So the first church I, I went to, and I'm going to try to make it short, 
I knew a lot, see, but I didn't have the wisdom to keep quiet. Give to gab. Okay, so that we're in a potluck question and answer service. So the pastor would ask questions, and I noticed hardly anybody is kind of like today. I'll ask a question, they're sca either scared to answer it, or they don't know. That's horrible. And he asked some important questions and everything like that. And I noticed nobody raised their hand. You know what I did, Christy? I raised my hand. I know. They called on me and gave the answer clear and concise. And everybody took their eyes off the pastor and put them on me. No, don't do that. That wasn't the point. And so he answered another question. Who could explain the Trinity, the Godhead? I watched. My hand went up. And the guy looks at me and says, you can? I said, sure. It's not as hard as we make it. If you try to analyze it here, it won't work. So let's use three illustrations. The egg and water and the one word for many members. And I went ram through it. I don't want to take you long. Egg has three parts, shell, white yolk, right? It's one egg. But God is three persons, not just one egg. He doesn't act one way, and he has the one part and the other part. No, that's a religious, demonic way of explaining the Trinity. No, he is a unit. Everyone say unit. How many know that the word army is one word, having many members? God is one word, three persons. Are you with me? And releasing you. So, listen. Many people today don't understand who the Trinity is. And guess what they did? After the potluck and all the people around me, I get a tap on my shoulder. And oh, the elders want to talk to you. Oh, took me in the back and says, oh, we love that you have all that knowledge. But we don't think you should be around us nor with us. Oh, yeah, broke my heart. He says, um, because you just don't fit in. I don't know how to really take that. God said they were jealous. So I got in my little Volkswagen Beetle, and I started to cry. I says, God, I want to be somewhere where I can have follow-up and learn more. Come on, everybody does, right? And God says, son, and this is what he said to me. Didn't understand it at the time. He'll say something to you, but then it'll unfold. And he says, son, I didn't call you to go to church. I called you to start one. And from then on, everything changed. Hello. The next one I went to, I helped them. They were sitting around talking about all the negatives. It's like scratching the scab off of their body. Reinfect it, making it bleed, reinfect it, and making it make by talking negative. That's what we do. So I came in, and you know what the word God gave me? I said, Lord... They want me to go up there and share a word. I'm a visitor here. I said, I want you to get up there and talk to them about quit picking their scabs. Picking a wound open again. Let it heal. So I preached a wonderful sermon. People got saved, healed, and everything. But what a message, Linda. Stop picking your scabs. Say amen. All right, Lord, release you and bless you. Did you get something out of that? Amen. Amen.